This video contains spoilers for Final Fantasy XIV's patch 6.3, as well as minor spoilers for Endwalker. If you're not caught up, please proceed with caution. Sup folks, patch 6.3 is officially live. Again, after some minor emergency adjustments. We'll do this in the other patch debriefs. Some light, spoiler-free talk first, and then I'll let you know when we get into the rich, meaty center. Mmm, high-quality dumpling animation. Overall, the quality has not dropped in the slightest since 6.2. The dungeon, trial, and raid were all a blast and had a nice level of difficulty that felt approachable, but still challenging given what we've been presented so far. The story seems to be coming to a head in both the MSQ and Alliance raid. Without going into too much detail just yet, we have reached the true identity and antagonist's perspective part of the narratives. Most likely, 6.4 will wrap up the current ongoing story while leading us into whatever 7.0's plot will be. It is a little bit weird to have a break from the usual storytelling formula we've kind of had so far. You know, the point .3 patch usually serves as the conclusion to the previous expansion story while setting up the lead into the nexts, but you know, it's a little bit refreshing at the same time. It's a very nice change of pace, and I'm kind of excited to see where they take this. To no one's surprise, Soken absolutely demolished it with the soundtrack again. The new dungeon and trial tracks have some fantastic usage of leitmotif, and the raid tracks are just impeccable. Alright, here's your clearly defined spoiler warning. I'm going to be discussing encounter and story spoilers from here on out, and if you haven't finished 6.3, you should do yourself a favor and skip to the timecode on the screen, or use the chapters in the description to hop over to the end of the video. 6.3's MSQ continues to deliver on the high-quality storytelling we're all used to, picking up where we left off in the story of the 13th Zero and Golbez. However, Unlike in previous patches where we have this focus on a more macro narrative with the world building and the big conflict, which don't get me wrong, there is quite a bit of focus on that in this patch, we spend a lot of time looking at some character building and some more intimate moments between characters we honestly probably didn't expect to see interacting at all. After a bit of catch up with the twins in Garlemald, we actually spend a great deal of time watching Zero learn about the world and interact with new people. Most important among these is a little chat she has with Ulyss. Since Endwalker proper, Ulyss has kind of changed from being this angry, violent little troll man into a normal, well-adjusted human being. Okay, alright, uh, jokes aside, Ulyss has experienced a tremendous amount of growth, especially with his trust for others. When he speaks with Zero, his position isn't just some random new guy she just met, but as someone who at one point was in a very similar kind of emotional space to where she is right now. By experiencing and accepting the kindness and compassion of strangers, who he previously considered to be his enemies, Ulyss learned to cooperate with others despite initial perceived differences, and now works very closely with Alphino and Alice to provide aid to the people displaced within Garlemald. This conversation, coupled with us and the twins saving her from getting swarmed by Void Scent, are crucial steps in decapitalisming Zero and helping her begin to understand that, you know, sometimes you can just do things because you want to help people, and, you know, that's not weird. This change in worldview becomes incredibly apparent when Zero suddenly decides to flex her newfound moral superiority on Ruby Conte after he literally just finished getting beat up by a gang of eight people. That being said, she does admit that she doesn't really understand why she said what she did to Ruby Conte, but admits that she's really interested in processing all of the things she's suddenly feeling. You see this? This, this internal struggle? That sweet fucking inner turmoil? That's some A-plus character writing. Zero may be super strong when it comes to fighting, something we saw wasn't always the case, but when it comes to understanding herself, she struggles just like everyone else. Clear access to a character's growth and witnessing their humanity is a surefire way to make a deep yet easy to understand character. God, I fucking love watching character growth. On a related subject, we finally know Golbez's true motivations. This asymmetrical MF just wants to die. Under most circumstances, my response would be, Damn, bro, that's crazy. But what I do find fascinating about this motivation's presentation is Golbez and his Archfiends, or more specifically Rubicante's, view on his campaign for self-destruction. Golbez appears to have lost all hope in his world's salvation, and with seemingly no way to restore its people from their endless, monstrous lives, he has chosen to try and give them a second chance at life by having them reborn on the source, with the uh, slight issue of a full-scale Voidsent invasion being needed to achieve this. Golbez is 100% a bad guy. It's just the way he's framed as this tragic hero doing the only thing he can think to do for his people. It's just weird, but like compelling at the same time. Rupert Conte's motivation is also pretty interesting. He serves Golbez as a minion not because he is 100% believing in Golbez's plan. He does think it's the best option that's left for their world, but he does it mostly out of a 
sense of guilt. It's an act of penance for his failures in preventing the Contra Memoria. And what's fascinating about this is it means that the two of them aren't committing villainy just for the desire for evil, but because they don't feel like they have any other choice left to them. Not exactly a new approach to writing antagonists for this game, but I'll certainly take it over whatever the hell happened with WoW's last expansion. In terms of the Alliance raid, we're still kind of in the dark about the ultimate mission of the Twelve is. They just kind of teased it in this update, didn't really get into it. However, we do have a fairly concrete idea of what the Twelve are, both from what they have said during the raid quest and thanks to a neat little confirmation sent to me by a friend. As was pretty easily surmised by players, the Twelve are all but confirmed to be the Ancients aligned with Vinna prior to the Sundering of the Source. In fact, I'm pretty sure we can actually find some of them on Elpis, as is shown by this screenshot from a quest there. Our big revelations for this patch are that the Twelve's monument, the big crystal thing, housed their individual roles and serves as a guide for their purposes, akin to the crystals possessed by the Convocation that we found back in 5.3. We also found out that the appearance and demeanor of the Twelve has changed over time based on the belief of their worshippers. Now, this leads me to believe that they're probably all some sort of primals, akin to Hydaelyn and Zodiac. Maybe some kind of, like, less powerful mini-primal, something along those lines. The final new piece of information is that there's supposedly an unnamed 13th god who has just been wandering around. It's Derek. It's so painfully obviously Derek, and I will be incredibly surprised if they try and say that it isn't when 6.5 comes out. As the raid quest progressed, the core rules and tenets the Twelve adhere to were revealed, most important of which was their strict adherence to non-interference. And then we had Derek making comments like, Oh man, I totally helped that dude, but you know, I never tried to interfere in the lives of others. You get me, right? Look, the man all but admitted to living by the exact same rule set as the gods. He's secretly an ancient, and has just been living amongst mortals this whole time. Now, before we all start ranting about this plot being predictable or something, don't. Don't do that. The way the writers are presenting Garrick isn't predictable, it's deliberate. The Twelve mentioned a couple times that their goals have almost been achieved thanks to us and their purposes will all be completed soon. Why then would a member of their number masquerading as a mortal not also begin alluding to his own role in these goals? The man just wants to retire. Hell, he even talks about having to say farewell to us at the end of all of this. His purpose is almost fulfilled and then he gets to return to the livestream. It's what he's wanted for so long. Or, you know, I'm completely off and it was the monkey the whole time. Huh, would you look at that? At the end of the video. What do you think about my assorted post-patch thoughts? Do you agree or disagree with my opinions on 6.3? Either way, I'd love to hear your own thoughts down in the comments. And while you're on your way down there, why not consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel? I've got a pretty big project that's been in the works for a hot minute, and subbing and clicking the bell is the best way to be notified when it drops. Soon. Hopefully. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next video.